Welcome to ITSS online training. I'm Per Fredriksen from Seven Technologies Denmark and I'm here to present our SCADA system ITSS. This is lesson 19, faceplates in ITSS. In this lesson, you will learn what is a faceplate, what's the definition of a faceplate, how do you create a faceplate diagram in the ITSS system, how do you link the PLC logic uh, into the faceplate diagram in the definition module, and how do you finally install and test the faceplate? A faceplate is a specialized term used in the automation industry. It is used to describe an element in the SCADA or supervisory HMI system which interfaces directly with the logic of a PLC controller and provides a dynamic graphical display to the operator of the PLC logic. The faceplate ensures that the HMI is always synchronized with the logic in the controller. So let's take a look at how we do this in the ITSS system. The first thing we do is we want to design this faceplate diagram. So let's take a look at an existing faceplate diagram and then create our own faceplate in the definition module. So we move into the IGSS start menu and we double click the definition module, the main design module in IGSS. The diagram you see on the screen right now is called fuel preparation. As you can see, there are a lot of conveyor belts on the screen and you can see the small gray text boxes, which are conveyors that you can actually control via a faceplate. So for each of these gray boxes, we have actually defined a faceplate diagram in the IGSS system. So let's double click at one of them and see how a faceplate looks in the IGSS system. We double click on the object CNV 9A, center of the screen, and we can see a pop-up window, the faceplate diagram, with the name of the object CNV 9A. At the top of the diagram, we see the object name, and we can put in a description, of course, also, so that the operator knows what we're talking about. And uh, below the object name, the operator will see the current status of the object. That's what we see uh, in the states stop, remote run, trip, local not ready, local run. And on the right side, he can control the object. Uh, he, it will automatically switch between auto mode and manual mode, and if it goes into the manual mode, the operator will be able to uh, manipulate or control the conveyor with the stop and start buttons at the bottom of the diagram. Notice also that uh, there's only a close button on this diagram because it's a pop-up diagram. So we don't have the minimize and maximize buttons that we normally do in, a, in an IGSS diagram. Okay, so uh, let's, uh, let's pin this diagram on top of the screen. We do this by going into the system menu of the faceplate diagram and choose pin. This will allow us to create a new faceplate diagram uh, which is similar to this one so that we can build it from scratch. So what we do now is we create a new diagram similar to the one we see on the screen. I go into the diagram menu, I click create, and I enter my name, which is my faceplate, my faceplate diagram. And we want to see the uh, description in the menu. We, want, we don't want the name to appear in the menu. Um, and we don't, want the, uh, we don't want the minimize and maximize buttons. We only want the title bar and the system menu. We can also select pinnable so that we can pin it uh, so that the diagram stays on top of the screen. We click OK because we just choose a gray background for this uh, particular diagram. And now we have our faceplate diagram. We resize the diagram. And we place it on the screen where we want it. Now, in order to see both these faceplate diagrams, I will also pin this one. Click in the system menu and click the pin option here. So how did we do this, uh, how did we do this faceplate diagram? 
We go into the view menu, select the drawing toolbar, and uh, we want to insert a text box at the top of the screen. So we simply select the text tool up here in the drawing toolbar. We click on the screen and we write the name CNV9A, that's the object name, and we click OK. We move it into position, we resize it, and uh, we, we can of course make uh, a border around it and all these uh, small features. But let's keep it like this. We also want to have two uh, group boxes in the faceplate diagram, one for the status and one for the control. How do we do this? We go again into the drawing toolbar and we click on the group box icon, second from the right. Click on it and mark the area where you want the group box. We'll do it like this. There you go. And uh, we can right click properties and we can go in and select the text we want to appear here. And that was status. Okay, so that was the group. Uh, we can also change the background color to gray or we can actually also change the background color to transparent. There you go. And we make a copy of the status group box and we paste it to make the control box over here. We simply go into properties again, change the text to control. And now we want to do one of the buttons. How did we do these buttons in the faceplate diagram? We take the one called local not ready and we make a copy. We go to the new faceplate diagram. We paste it as a reference back to the same object. We place it inside the group box like this. Let's go inside the object to see how this was actually done. Because this object is of course linked or connected to the CNV 9A object. We double click it, we can see that it's linked to the uh, motor. Uh, it is uh, the four state motor is the template name. And on the edit mapping tab, we can see all the PLC addresses, how it was actually mapped into the PLC logic. If we go over to the attributes of text um, tab, we can see how we have, how we have connected the background color of the button to the actual state of the process component. So when it's in the local mode, as it is right now, it will be yellow, that's the yellow background. All the other states will turn into black in this mode. So that's how we did this effect on the screen. And that is, uh, that is the short story about creating a faceplate diagram. Of course, when you have created this faceplate diagram, when you created the first one, you can actually turn it into a group object in IGSS and uh, you can make, you can reuse that group object again and again in the configuration. So all the gray boxes on the screen, as we saw before, they could be copies of the original group object that we created. Also, uh, of course, if you want to make a more dynamic solution, then you would need to go into the VBA uh, editor and make some custom code which is linked to the PLC. That would allow you to make a dynamic link to the PLC logic. But what I've just shown you is the simple way of making faceplates in IGSS in a very, very simple way. That's all about faceplates for now. Thank you for listening. For more information about faceplates, please visit our website, www.70dk/igss.